Ah, anxiety. An affliction that ails several human beings on this blue spherical domain we call Earth. A disease that has ravished the ability to articulate sounds from many and has launched a barrage of melancholy, sorrow, despair and inexplicable emptiness to the point where socializing with other human beings feels like an arduous task that likes no other person has ever received. It's awful. It's heart-wrenching. It is suffocating. But, what if I told you that anxiety, or more specifically, social anxiety has a certain type of appeal or mystique to it that induces pleasure in its beholder, in the form of anime. It's no surprise that we've recently been getting an influx of anime where the main character has trouble socializing with their peers because of some speech impediment that stems from anxiety, and has fears of being rejected after attempting to befriend someone or from having some ill-conceived notion that everyone is a hellspawn who relishes at the thought of ridiculing and giving a flagpole wedgie to a loner in order to laugh at the humiliation from experiencing such torment. That's awful. But what's not awful is this excellent anime that the season of fall 2022 has graced us with. Bochi Zaroku. An alternative take on the cute more blob anime Kaon, but the girls have colorful hair, actually have band discussions instead of tea time, and instead of this lovable goofball of a character named Yui, the main characters are basically Hitori Bochi from Hitori Bochi no Marumaru Seikatsu. On crack. I am not joking. The story is shown in the perspective of this lovely young girl, Hitori Goto. A girl who, evident from her name in the beginning segment of this video, is a socially anxious person, an individual who gets inflicted by paralysis from the mere thought of trying to interact with another person. From a very young age, Hitori has often conjured up the question, would it be okay for someone like me to join in when looking at other kids engaging with each other and having fun? And could it be possible for someone such as myself to fit in and experience the same joy along with them? Or would I just simply be an unwanted or meddlesome person who interrupted their playtime? But while asking those questions and second guessing her decisions on multiple occasions, she essentially missed the opportunity in acquiring friends and ended up alone. The thought that she should go about some serious change entered her mind several times but due to not conversing or interacting with people on a day to day basis, all she could do when faced with a random person was just stammer over her words in an attempt to provide a simple greeting. The life of a loner seemed to be the only path open for someone like her until someday she saw a program that struck a chord in her. That was the day Hitori found a way to break out of a shell of eternal solitude. Yes lord, a girl finally found purpose in her life. She decided, nay, she declared that she is going to learn how to play a guitar in order to someday show her wicked skills to her entire school in a cultural festival and have everyone fawn over her like she's a goddess and potentially acquire set friends she has only dreamt of up until that point in her life. After that bold declaration, we fast forward three years down the line and the last, the one and only Hitori Goto, aka Guitar Hero, a guitar shredding demon who has amassed over 30,000 subscribers on YouTube from making very exceptional cover songs of popular bands, is finally in high school and is still a loner who makes music in a closet and has never flexed her shredding skills to anyone aside from the internet because she forgot that uh, reality is a bitch. Hopes, dreams, goals, objectives, whatever you want to call them, each and every single person on this planet is at least one thing they strive to achieve. However, there is an organ which is located within our cranium called the brain that has a tendency to form negative thoughts which turn into electrical impulses filled with pessimism, which then get transmitted throughout our body by our neurons and have you rethinking the idea of becoming or doing something grand because of being under the assumption that it'll end in failure. Some people have the prowess to disregard that negativity whereas others fall victim to it and essentially give up and the latter are the ones who find a sense of relatability in the character. Well, they find that and countless other things relatable such as uh, the inability to say no when asked a favor, banishing a traumatizingly cringe memories and uh, requesting death metal to be blasted on the school comms in an attempt to find somebody who shares the same interest as her. Aside from that, it's just pessimism, pessimism, and extremely exaggerated pessimism. Some sympathize with her, some feel sorry for her, some laugh at her humility and awkwardness while being fully aware that this socially awkward little girl is going to be enclosed in a closet for all eternity, only pleasing her internet audience and will never achieve her dreams of playing live on stage with a band and gaining an entourage. And she's in a band. Oh, oh, she, she's in a band now. 
That's our next <clears throat> Lads and lassies, the time has come for the world-renowned internet sensation Guitar Hero to take the stage and ensure that those years of mastering the complications of a guitar went for naught. By finally playing it in front of people for the first time and eventually head towards Budokan and flex his skills to the entire nation with her band, Kisuko Bando. But unfortunately that's not gonna happen because she found out she was garbage. <laughs> well, at least you're gaining some friends, Bochi, which is a good segue into the characters while we're at it. When it comes to most slice of life anime, the plot isn't extremely complex or extravagant, similar to the likes of Death Note, Full Metal Alchemist, Attack on Titan, or some other plot heavy anime. So, you get other aspects of the anime being elevated by the staff and cast, such as the art, direction, voice acting, and how the characters interact, to compensate for the story and provide a great watching experience. Possibly even greater than that portrayed in the original source material, and this anime is no exception. One of the aspects this anime showcases its flair with is with its characters. And boy are they a lovable bunch, each with their own distinct personalities and characteristics. Aside from Bochi, you got Nijika, a vibrant and energetic girl, Kita, a cheerful and socially adept girl who is also a, a, a sad bit thirsty for the fourth member of the Kesuk Bando, Yamanda Ryo, who is a troll and a loner. And I'm not talking loner similar to Bochi, no no, she is a lone wolf. Bochi constantly aspires for companionship, whereas Ryo is content with being lonely. Let's not get those two twisted. Ryo is in a different plane of loneliness that many loners can never properly grasp. The interactions are pretty fun as well. Nijika's cheery energy is always a sight for sore eyes and subtle judgments of the three characters' quirky natures and overall behaviors when they're at full display is really funny and also moments where she, uh, she kind of shows a bit of care and compassion for Bochi so heartfelt. And Kita showing how much of a sim she can be for Ryo is a delight and well, I guess sims can be lovable if what they do isn't revolting. Plus the person she's simping for is Ryo, she's, uh, she's exceptional and Ryo is uh, Ryo. The conversations flow so naturally, each character's VA performs so well throughout each episode, and one thing that is always good to witness from these four coming together is how they'll change Bochi. At the very beginning of the series, she could barely hold a conversation with any of them, and now she's capable of doing so, with a, with a few difficulties of course. And Nijika's presence for one influences Bochi to do certain things she normally wouldn't do to her complications, such as being outgoing and talking to other people. Even though she's not aware of it, it's very beneficial to her and results in a bit of growth in the character. Uh, one step at a time, of course. And uh, you kind of find out that she's very, very extreme. Like some of the stuff she does to ensure she gets out of doing anything that pertains to socializing with other people is just borderline psychotic. Those are ice cubes, by the way. There are moments throughout this anime where it would feel and seem like an entirely different anime just so they can visually portray to the audience how Butchie's internal struggles of social anxiety are like. Yeah, that or fantasies. One moment, everything is a typical slice of life, typical Butchy stuff. And then the next thing, Butchy has freaking cyber psychosis from feeling the envy of one of the people she knows having friends. Or it turns into a different dimension. It's madness. It's chaotic. But it's very creative. And the creative minds that take part in this anime just make it blend so well with the more normal scenes. Well, normal-ish. The art is so astonishing and the characters have so much life to them. That character acting is just goddamn chef's kiss, man. Just chef's kiss. If you were to tell me that this anime didn't look good, I would ask you to hightail it to the nearest neurosurgeon. Butchie the Rock might not be the best anime airing for most people out there. I mean, no surprise with what's currently airing this season. We got juggernauts this fall. But if some rare being were to come to me and say Butchie the Rock is the best anime of fall 2022, I wouldn't even fight them because it's just it's, it's just fantastic. It's giving me a sense of what I enjoy most in size of life anime, while not being afraid to go berserk and just animate stuff in a very deranged manner as if everyone at Cloverworks is on freaking LSD. It's an amazing anime, man. And that's it for me. If you miraculously enjoyed this video, do leave a like and consider subscribing. And like that, the shadow was gone.